Hey everyone, this is Stephen Moore, also known as Uncle Phantasmo. I am ready to move on to the support, and I hope you're also ready for that to happen too, I guess? I don't know why that's a question. But let's just move on. Um, <clears throat> this one is going to be a little more complicated than I thought it would be, because I needed to do some uh, measurements and things like that uh, in order to get it to work properly. Uh, so I'll show you how I did it. And if you like it, copy me. Um, so I uh, started off with a new component, naming it support. Um, and then starting a sketch uh, with the line and selecting the plane that we're going to use. Now, the first thing I'm going to actually do is go to go and find the sketch for the hinge because uh, I want to be able to reference it. So I'm turning that back on. I'm going to turn off the bodies, but keep the sketch there. Um, should, yeah, should still be all good. Uh, and I want to select a line that starts at the center of this uh, circle. And already I realized my mistake, which was I still need the bucket to be visible what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from here to the bottom of the bucket um, and then bring back my arm and measure this one's a little more uh, this one's a little more uh, undefined but needs to be well, that's probably a pretty good distance this is where the support is going to attach and create the hinge for, or create the pivot point for the swinging arm. Um, and the reason why we're doing this is because we're going to make another line that goes straight down and this line is going to equal the distance of uh, this line and this line. So we're going to convert these lines into come on, you let me do it before. Let's try this. Select it, normal construction, select it, normal construction, and I'm going to hit D to define these lines. Um, this is just a easy way to get the actual um, distances that, that they are. And then with that done, I'm going to use a fix unfix and select our pivot point because I don't want that to move. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to define this line by hitting D again, selecting the line, dragging it out, and this time what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the distance here, I'm just going to round up, uh, and then add the distance here, one, one, six, and then I'm going to add some clearance, about 10 millimeters. And it does all the math for me. Uh, from here, I'm going to create a couple more construction lines uh, by hitting L and dragging one straight down at this end and dragging one uh, down from this end. Hitting OK. Selecting and turning them into normal construction lines. And then I'm going to hit R. And I'm going to create a rectangle. And this time, I hope I can do this properly. What I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this constraint. Because I want to be able to move, um, I want to be able to move this out uh, and not have it tied to the length. So I'm going to take it drag it out and it's acting funny because I have other constraints on it that I don't really need right now. Let's try that again. Nope, still not going to work for me. Let's see. I'm just going to delete all the constraints and then maybe it'll let me move it. Oh, okay. Well, 
the workaround for that is I'm just going to hit R again and just build the additional uh, space. I'm going to create a line above the pivot point. That is the um, distance that I want my width to be. And this time I'm going to select midpoint of this. Oh, no, that doesn't work. I want coincidence. Oh no, horizontal. Oh, slash vertical, the center point, and that. So now it'll center up nicely. And then from there, uh, I'm going to turn that also into a normal construction line. Uh, or a construction line instead of a normal line. I'm going to hit R, select these two um, points. Let's see if it'll let me snap. All right, I have drag it out. There we go. Now I have the this support is actually the appropriate dimensions, but I want this width of. I'll just show you. I'll drag this one out. It's twenty. I need the width. I need the width here to not you. Try again. Gonna fight me a little bit. Sketch. Well, you know what? If it's gonna fight me. I don't need it anymore now that it's done its job. So I'm just gonna delete these. That way I don't have to fight it more than I uh, need to. There. 20. Now we have the basic support beam uh, built. Uh, one thing I want to do before I forget is I want to create a circle here with a diameter of 10 uh, because I want to be able to cut out this shape properly uh, later. And I, would, for cleanliness sake, I'm going to use the trim and get rid of some of these extra lines. And I'm noticing that for whatever reason, uh, in the process of this, I've somehow forgotten. So what I can do is I just dimension this one too to get that into it. It should should all line up properly. So now I'm gonna do a press pull on it, and I know I want it to be 20 millimeters. Now I'm gonna create some supports that go from uh, about midway here to about midway here, and I'm not gonna be super precise about this one this time. Uh, so I'm just going to create another line sketch and this time I'm going to select the actual face and drag out a line from midpoint to midpoint. And then I'm going to select actually before I do that drag another line out because I'm going to use this as my mirror um, for this. I'll show you how to do that. Sketch, mirror, should have that selected, and then my mirror line. And it'll just duplicate it straight across. And I can see that this is not, I just realized that this is not actually, this is on the grid and this is not on the grid. So I'm going to um, Zoom out real quick, do a horizontal vertical, select midpoint to midpoint, and now it's centered on it the way that I want it to be. So I'll go back, sketch, mirror, do my mirror line, and that should sit right on just the way it's supposed to. Um, this next tool I have trouble with. I'm going to show you how I use it. Um, hopefully you guys get better results, but this is how I've been using it. Create rib, and whenever it does it, by default, it actually, on mine, does a symmetry, 
but I really want it to go one direction because I'm not starting in the center of the body. So I'm gonna go symmetric and then one direction and then change it from depth to two next and then back to depth and that gets me the two arrows. So now I can set these. I always hit enter and that always kills me every time. Try and do it again. Create. Yeah, because I meant to do it this way so I could show you it again. Symmetric, one direction, two next, depth. Now I get both of these to drag out. And I want both measurements to equal one will equal negative 20, the other one will equal 20. And then I'm going to have to repeat that same thing. I have to bring back my sketch, create rib, select it, it does something funky that I don't need it to do. So I'll go back to symmetric, one direction, two next, and depth, negative 20, and 20. Nope, this one will actually be negative 20 also. And that'll create the basic structure of the support. I'm going to add some fillets to it so that if we ever theoretically wanted to um, use some computer aided manufacturing uh, and drill out this piece from a solid sheet of metal, we could do it. Um, and the fillets. I'm putting in there because the tool used to cut out these holes and stuff is going to have a real hard time with these 90 degree angles. So we'll just select them uh, by holding down shift. I'm going to try and grab them all uh, before doing the fillet. You can also do it after you do the fillet, um, but it's a little weird sometimes. Uh, and I'm going to keep this at about a radius of five. Five looks good. Uh, and then for style, I'm going to fill out these ones. Probably more like eight millimeters. So it has a rounded top. And then I'm going to fill it these two. I'm actually going to make it a lot larger because I like the shape. So let's say let's just say 50 and then this is an impossible angle here um, well not impossible but super sharp and I wouldn't want to cut myself on it so I'm gonna do a fillet on that make sure I have both of them selected yeah I have them both selected and do a fillet and this one can be we'll do four now you can see that because we built it, uh, it's actually not in the position we want it to be, so we're going to do a move, select the body, I'm going to drag it out, and then change my angle, put it pretty close so I have an idea of how close I want it, and then I'm just going to round it off to 35 millimeters. And like we've done in the past, we're going to go create, mirror, select the body, select the mirror plane or the work plane hit OK and now we have our support that is tall enough to let the arm swing freely um, and has the appropriate uh, dimensions that should create for a good trebuchet alright so in the next um, tutorial I'm going to show you guys how I made the basket and the ropes and the ring. Uh, the ring is really easy, but the other things are potentially confusing. So we're going to go over that next, and I'll see you then.